Hey guys, it's Joey. Today I'm gonna to show you what I plan to do with that UV sterilizer uh, that I got from Two Please, and a little bit of an update on what I've already done so far. So let me just show you kind of the situation with the dinos here. Uh, you know, this is kind of a more, a higher flow area, but it, it seems to attract the most uh, over here. Uh, that may or may not make sense, I don't really know. Similar to uh, this rock here, uh, everything looks a little bit more orange with this filter on it than it really is, but it does help. So then we have this area over here that gets a lot, and this is probably the lowest flow area, which uh, doesn't really have much. So that's a little bit strange. Uh, what I've done so far is I've done two doses of Microbacter 7, um, a little bit overdosing on that, and I've done two doses of Vibrant as well. I'm going to keep going ahead and uh, dosing a Microbacter 7 daily, uh, just until I see some kind of improvement or I run out of it, and then Vibrant as well um, every, I think it's two or three times a week, I dose up to on there. And then today, I'm going to go ahead and vacuum the sand bed, but I'm going to do that with a little bit of a twist. I'm going to uh, use my siphon. So uh, this is my siphon here, and I attach it to a uh, longer line. I think this is about uh, three quarter or something like that. And uh, I'm going to hook that in line with the UV sterilizer, and then I'm going to go ahead and run the UV sterilizer into a fresh uh, filter uh, pad. And then I'm just gonna keep going in a continuous loop. And everything that I vacuum from the sand bed will pass through the UV. Now with this method, I'm gonna lose a lot of stuff that's possibly in the sand, a lot of good stuff. But uh, I think the benefits here may, um, you know, outrun that. We're gonna have to see how that goes and works out for me. And then after I'm done vacuuming the sand bed here, I'll go ahead and just hook up the UV sterilizer normally and run it normally that way. So with that said, that's kind of the, the battle that we're dealing with right now. That's the plan moving forward. And uh, you know, the clowns agree. So if the clowns agree, then go ahead and get started. Okay, so here's the setup. It is siphoning right now. It goes down here. Um, it, I get a little bit of a leak out of the Python hose there, but uh, it doesn't look like the actual UV is leaking. And then, so this is the flow that we're getting out of there. So a nice steady flow. And now, I guess we'll go ahead and plug in the UV and see if it uh, still works with water running through it. Alright, so I plugged it in. It didn't blow up. Indicator light says it's on. So I'll go ahead and uh, start siphoning up here and I'll show you guys the results at the end.
Okay, so I just got done vacuuming and uh, you know, it's a little cloudy. I uh, brushed off all the rocks too. Uh, so that's when it really got cloudy. You can see that there's uh, still a little bit in the sand bed, but that's because I brushed off all the rocks so it went all over. Um, oh, and then there go down the lights one. So we're gonna find out if uh, this UV sterilizer made any bit of a difference and I will keep you guys updated. One week later. Okay guys, this is one week later after I uh, vacuumed and uh, did everything there. So you can see this is kind of what I'm dealing with now. Uh, it's not as stringy as it was before and it kind of looks to me more like uh, just diatoms or something rather than actual dinos now. You can see it's it's not really stringy like before, and I'm okay with diatoms, especially in the sand bed. I don't care about that. Uh, on the rocks, you can see here, the rocks are looking much better as well. There's nothing really covering the corals or anything here. Swinging around to the other side here. This is another spot where there's a lot of dinos on there. Is that Coraline? Hmm. Look at that. Interesting. Uh, also on this little mushroom box I got going on here, there's a lot of stuff growing on there. Here looks a lot clearer. The rocks are still dirty, but this is fine. And then I'll just show you down here as well. On this side, this is real bad over here as well. Especially in in this area. So everything's looking looking much better. Uh, my Duncans are actually much more happy as well, which is encouraging. The phosphates have gone up uh, quite a bit, uh, which is a good thing. I still have zero uh, nitrate, so I've ordered some, and then I'll go ahead and and start dosing some nitrate as well and then hopefully things really start taking off from there and we just go on cruise control and don't have any further issues. This was a coral that was really getting covered with a lot of stuff. Now, now it's looking much better. Anyway, so that's just a quick update. I think what I'll do is I'll give this another couple days into the weekend here and then I'll go ahead and actually shoot that final update and then I'll post it and it'll be up for y'all's torture. One week later. Okay, it's about a week later now. And there's Hank, looking great. And you can see the sand bed here. This is because of the flow, all this in here, but See, last week there were some diatoms, and in here, back in here. You know what? Let me let me move my towel, so you can actually use the uh, little Tunsy hack that it did as a uh, towel rack or maybe a, a coat hanger or something. You know? Yeah, you see a little bit of diatoms still back here, but it's kind of like the, the lowest flow area anyway, so. You would kind of expect that stuff. Then on this side, these are uh, what you call goby mounts. This is what happens when gobies get bored. They start doing this. There they go. They're working on that side now. Yep. So, uh, but <laughs> before they started doing all this, uh, the sand bed was perfectly fine, nice and white, and. Here are all the rocks. Rocks are looking good. Charlie's looking beautiful. 
back to the rocks. So you can see, uh, nothing left over on the rocks at all. This is a good piece to kind of zoom in on, see it's nice and clean around it. So that's really the update here. Um, defeated dinos. Um, yeah, so how did I do it? I did it with that UV sterilizing vacuum and then running the UV sterilizer. I have the, oh, let me take the filter off. I have the UV sterilizer running down here. It's still on, indicated by that light. Um, I guess that maybe it's not a fake light bulb like I thought it was, but I just have it hooked up to a uh, MJ, Cobalt MJ 1200, is that what it is? And then <clears throat> that's the uh, intake, it runs in there. These are labeled in and out by the way, so um, it took me a couple of times to figure out which one was actually in. So it goes through there, uh, it has a little like spirals inside, that's why it's called a twist. And then uh, I just had this extra line so I ran it, kind of secured it right there and then running it into this section here. I had it running right into uh, the return but it was collecting bubbles from the skimmer and just water overflowing when I get too lazy and that chamber starts overfilling. So I just put it in here just to diffuse some of the bubbles. And I think that's about it. Uh, it's been doing good. Yesterday I did, <clears throat> I did some additional testing on the tank and the tank was at four parts per million nitrates and uh, 0.15 phosphates and that's because I kind of uh, stopped maintenance for a little bit to try to see if I could up the nutrients and I've been feeding a lot heavier and things are looking really good in the tank as well. What I'm going to have to do is uh, eventually mount up this, this UV sterilizer maybe on this one. I still have to do all my wire management so I have this here. Um, I had one up there but it fell. So I need to get all this stuff uh, hard plumbed into the return there, uh, but I uh, haven't really felt like doing that because it's going to be really time consuming. Because to get all these wires uh, up through there, I'm going to have to unplug everything and then run basically one wire at a time. It's going to be really annoying. Uh, so for right now, this is the configuration we're dealing with. So some other things to note that I also did is I dosed uh, Microbacter 7 bacteria about <clears throat> I don't know, two or three times. And then I did uh, vibrant doses, uh, two at 20 milliliters and about three at 10 milliliters. Uh, those are just kind of sporadic type doses. Um, and that's about all I did. So uh, some combination of all the things that I did uh, help to defeat the dinos. I really think it was that UV sterilizing with the, the vacuuming. Because that allowed me to go to every single part of the sand bed where I saw it and completely clean it out and get it to run through that UV sterilizer. Uh, as you can see, uh, everything is doing good. Uh, this finger is, is getting huge. The uh, toadstool is getting pretty big. I actually have a A-can right under there, which I'll have to dig out. And I have an A-can right under there, which I'll have to dig out because of this guy. Right, bud? Yeah, asshole. And then the corals themselves are doing pretty good. I'll have to show these in a different update. That one gets a little bit washed out when I try to film it. Uh, chalice that I have in here, I think it's starting to kind of like go back over onto the frag plug. And then just one, one more update. These zoas on the right, right here, are uh, a little bit closed up. I'm not sure why, but these ones are our love and life. So are these guys. Another chalice that I need to, need to uh, flip over the right way. So let me show you a couple things. Wow, we're just doing a general update at the end here. So I noticed this uh, 
last week or so where a few spots of coralline algae started to grow. Hey cutie. So we had coralline algae growing right there. And then yesterday I was just kind of looking around and I started to look at this spot right here. Let me see if I can hold it steady enough so it can focus. Look at that. We got coralline algae on the rocks. So then, after I saw the uh, coralline algae growing there, I took my uh, I took my little magnifying lens. And I started looking all around the tank. It's looking everywhere. I was like, okay, well, let's see. See if I could see some more spots. There's my anemone. It's absolutely miserable. And then I get to right here and I'm like what the hell is that that is one of my mushrooms it's called a lava lamp mushroom that seems to have escaped from the mushroom box and landed right there so uh, I didn't want it there but it lives there now and then I wanted to show you the color on these guys these guys their color is absolutely 100 percent better than when i put them in the tank especially this wall hammer i'll have to show you guys a comparison maybe i will remind myself to overlay that in the editing process uh, somewhere in this rant the phone is about to hit 10 minutes in this segment so with that said this was the battle with dinos uh, I will call it a success. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next one.